starts and says, we will want to separate the yield from the local trade limit. Now, this is the principle of one of my plus other or regular ideal survey. If you adhere to these four principles of one of survey, we can reasonably guarantee say that we are not going to even damage your movies. If the improvement you may not be guaranteeing how much percentage. But remember, don't touch the medium market as far as possible. So do superior for the money and reserve it for the vocal ligament. Try to dissect the vocal ligament away from the, the, the disease and preservation of as much normal tissue as possible. It is just like press. Before press, when the third activity was being done, including the not only the polyphonal tissue but the normal tissue also was removed. Now with the press you you remove, you remove the, the excision of the normal tissue is very little. So similarly in lives, you don't remove excise of mucosa unless and ultimately at the end of the operation you try to retrain the mucosa if possible. That should be possible, not if possible. Most of the time it will be possible. And use of tissue glue and use of sweetness, both they have used. But I think most of the things are warranted if you well undermine and retrain it, it should be okay. Now, you might have heard a lot about the microflow. This is actually, I believe that this is a little bit of too much of air splitting. Now, what exactly is needed microflow in condition like vocal node, you make the incision as close to the medial margin as possible, but still it is on the superior surface. Why in a big right is a deep or assist, you make the incision far too lateral. So this is the lateral microflow and medial microflow. I think too much must be made of this microflap technique with the result that I have seen people attempting to exercise the thing, uh, vocal nodule elevating the trying to elevate the mucosa. It's not really needed actually. Only if there is reduction cover, you need to elevate the flap and exercise it. Otherwise, you can actually trim off anything bulging beyond the medial mark. You can actually exercise because you can cover the, the mucosa. But if it is a cyst, it is far too lateral, then you may have to elevate. So that is about the microphone. Now, recently, Gray produced a, 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 a landmark article on the microphone. This is very significant. So he said that between the mucosa and the vocal ligament, there are algorithmic points. This is a, a landmark study. So he said that this amount of the anthony fibers is genetically determined. The amount of fibers I have is different from what you are having. So people who have got less number of this anchoring fibers in the right knee space are likely to develop outpouchings of the right knee space more easily. In other words, they are likely to develop vocal nodules and vocal controls. So that is why we see people who are doing vocal strain with almost the same, same uh, uh, amount, but some people develop vocal nodules, some people may not develop. So this would be the fact. Now, based on Gray's study, Robert Sutherland is probably the founder father of the professional voice here. You can tell that the science is super proud of one of the other things. So, Sutherland says that doing too much of dissection with the micro, medial, and lateral crop is not really correct. And he has got a point because even then, we have got perfect micro crop techniques. Sometimes patients develop long, long, long time to retain the, the, the normal voice. Even after a few weeks, even after six months, sometimes it takes for the patient to develop a normal voice. Because the, when you do the stroboscopy, there are not, may, not much of mucosal range. So, Sir say that on the evidence of Gray study, is that if you are doing too much of flap descent, you are actually you are cutting the, the anger and fibers. So, he advised that don't do too much of descent. So it is like uh, what he was telling, you are coming back to cycle again. Now he says that don't cut too much, make a small flap. Even if you can't deliver the, micro, the mucosa from the most medial margin, don't worry about it, you will just cut it. Because you are trying to elevate a flap from a nearly impossible thing like a vocal cord, you may be creating more damage than, than uh, good. But in a lateral case, where there is a cyst, where there is a surface, where there is a right case, there is definitely a lot of flap. But any medium microflap is highly questionable. Whether it is needed is highly questionable. So this is very, very important in concept now. Now you know that you all are familiar with the microscope, which uh, gives uh, reasonably good magnification. But now with the advent of telemicroscope, thanks to the 
uh, invention of shorts, car shorts company. Now we have got this operating video laryngoscope with the daily laryngoscope. This is a 15 degree telescope. I'm sure that now most of you have seen it. Like I think this year, I think that probably if take the operation ratio, I think we have a sort the highest number of operating video laryngoscope in our country because I think voice awareness is very, very good in Kerala. So this is a telescope, 50 degree telescope, which gives tremendous magnification. You can look at the audio with the monitor just like you are doing the press. Your neck is more far safer and no issue is coming in between the vocal, in between the scope and the surface. These are the basic set of instruments. Again, note the significant difference. Then the cup forces is now out because cup forces has got a curvy linear margin. So when you catch hold of the medial margin, chances are that you may create a non-linear medial margin or both of us. Now we have got a triangular plain saucer forces or the basket forces, which has got a catching margin very, very linear. So this is the right, uh, right and left. And this is the part force of the the micro laryngeal surgery, this is the flap elevator. This is the upcutting system. This again I have told many, many prices. If the management has got a lot of money, you can buy upcutting systems, down cutting systems, right cutting systems, left cutting systems, and straight cutting systems. But management will say that you know I can buy only one system by upcutting system. You recur only that system. 45 degree upcutting systems is more than good for most of the laryngeal micro laryngeal work. This is a single knife. Just like the nasal signal, net, but now I have abandoned this. The problem is that signal knife after three, five, six operations will become very branch. And when you incise with the signal knife, you sometimes create tear of the, the mucosa. So I have abandoned this whole together. So what I do is I have asked Krishna who has just done here from uh, Shovasa, he has done a very good, easy laryngeal BP hand. Broadcast are handling only which easily number 15 and number 11 plate can be easily connected. So this most we can put a very sharp cut. So I don't use it now. Same is the case with scissors. It is better to use uh, something like you know most of the time you can use scissors for only five cases, six cases. Then it becomes blank. This is a terrific equipment, honestly. With the vocal cord retractor, with, with which you can expand or uh, retract the ventricle so that you can see the whole of the line. All of the upper of the vocal cord, lower of the subglottis is given. And you can also have a suction tear. This is the basic set. Uh, if you are going to keep the budget uh, is better, you can have more information. I don't think that you can have a good idea. So, in this case, first, this is a tumor dissection. Now, previously, we were told that if you take a biopsy, then you see a vocal cord growth, you take a biopsy, take a biopsy at multiple sites and send for, growth, send for the report and come back. And that is logically you not know, correct at all because of two reasons. First of all, the patient came to you because of portions. If you are retaining part of the tissue, the portions will not go away. Second part is that you might exercise part of the growth. It might come back as small and so malignancy, but that simply doesn't mean that at other sites there will come malignancy. So now the current concept is that if there is a parallel method for a proliferative growth on the vocal bone, you have to first inject elevated from the vocal ligament and excise as completely as possible. You can see my technique of reiterating. Now at the end of the surgery, hardly there is any just a small uh, shadow like a blue light thing. So old papillon and this old suspected growth should be excised in top of the other than that and biopsy or biopsy or as well these two problems. Because patient mainly came to for the voice problem. If he is worried about the cancer, that is all right, but please show the brain is also. Another two. This is the cyst surgery. Now, technically, the most difficult. And in my experience, I have seen that most of the day when superior coronary does, the cyst breaks. The chance of cyst breaking is very, very high because most of them are thin work. You may be able to excise in total, maybe around 20% of cases or even less. But don't worry, the thing is that the avoid one mistake. What generally one does is that when you accidentally burst a cyst, immediately suction for the suction. That is a big mistake. If you put the suction on the, uh, the opened up cyst, then you won't see the cyst hole. So don't put the suction there. Don't get panic just before the cyst break. Just use the the, the, the corresponding glyphosate with it and catch
that along with the first material, most of the time you will be able to grab hold of the system to start to be easily operated with blood pressure. Now, this is a, a sharp pressure it came out normally, but I am telling that if most of the time, the chance is high that it might break. But don't apply such a If you apply a such then you will not see the system more again. It is very, very clean more. But you just hold with that big segment. And again, the same technique at the end of the surgery, if there is a little bit of you, there is no mucosa down and you lose here, if there is a mucosa you can always little bit undermine, but again, if what Robert Sutton says is correct, then you should not undermine too much of the too much also. So this is another vocal for cold infection. The area again, you can, but I don't want to preserve the mucosa here, because it is already bulging well medial to the vocal ligament, the medial margin of the vocal cord. So there is no point in actually keeping too much of mucosa. If there is very much redundant mucosa, you are justified in elevating it. So cyst you need to elevate, sulcus you need to elevate, lady sedima you need to elevate. Otherwise, you can actually exercise a little bit of mucosa, it overlying mucosa, it mucosa, it mucosa, and you can still get a very sharp medial margin. I think I will do it. Now we go to the laryngeal framework surgery. You all know this is now Uriko Ishiki who changed the concept. He's a plastic surgeon by train, but he was training in laryngology also and he using his brilliant brain. He conceived the idea of changing the pitch and the depth and everything of the whole thing. So I will use the descriptive tape first and I will use the tape used by Ishiki later. Now, medialization thyroplasty is the commonest technique, commonest thyroplasty. Ishiki called it type 1 thyroplasty. So, indication can be classified is told in a special sentence where the vocal cords don't or attack loosely or weak. They don't attack properly. So, any condition where the vocal cord attraction is too loose, you can do the medialization thyroplasty. So, if it is unilateral vocal cord palsy, is a commonest condition. We can get sulcus vocalis, we can get cross viral, we can get myasthenia gravis, all of them due to bilateral, the unilateral vocal cord palsy due to the unilateral. So that, that, that's the commonest uh, surgery uh, for the thyroplasty in uh, this group. So you know the technique, first of all it will be demonstrated, so I, I will not be going to the detail. There are techniques how you mark the window, you remove the window, the current concept is that you remove the window, you don't keep the cartilage there, you keep the internal perichondria intact. Again, don't go that if you accidentally cut the internal perichondria, nothing is going to happen because there are some things who intentionally cut, especially in the he cuts the, uh, the, the internal, internal perichondria intentionally, saying that in long standing paralysis, the internal perichondria is too stiff. So unless you cut it and make it private, the, 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 the process is will not uh, be in So uh, you can get a different types of cases. This is a unilateral, I have a lot of cases. This is a unilateral case who had a So he was trying to compensate this unilateral local nerve palsy with a high pitch pulse. That is why he has a high pitch pulse. So this is because of the not after the mistake. So what we must do is there was Thank you. 
then I would not have died to do that surgery. She never had any problem with the objection, so I went on to the surgery. Now, midline lateralization was tied to the rotus. So, here indicate is opposite. In type 1, the indication was that vocal cords were meeting too loosely. Here, the indicate is that vocal cords are meeting too tightly. So, the classic and actually the only case will be an extra spasmodic dysmonia, where there will be lots of fiber attraction of the vocal cord. Uh, even the regular that attraction will be there. And, and so, the vocal cords are attacking too much against each other. The technique will be very simple. I lower into this is the superior thyroid notch, this is the inferior thyroid notch. You split open the midline just like you do in the right of middle, but you don't open up the internal pericone. You just stop short of the internal pericone and keep on pulling the area apart. And one particular point, the swarm of it is available. Generally, it is 4 to 5 millimeter, and you measure that distance and keep a suitably wide sidearthic process in that position permanently fixed so that the vocal cords won't get a hyperadapted again. This is a good surgery, but it will never be asked as good as the This is a patient, the uh, Ajoinos. Uh, he, 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 he was a patient who had uh, uh, treatment uh, with portal and toxin. And he actually improved with portal and toxin. But the problem was that he is from Jargon, Ranji. So he couldn't come every six months. So then I had to do. He had intended to actually addition to this, he had also some severe muscle tension this time for which he had control a little bit of going to the nose after that. Actually, in fact, he stayed with the, stayed in the mind for nearly three months for the further pain. You can see the severe spasm. Three, four, one. See, the voice is much better, but it is breathing and it will slightly come down because we are constantly separating the vocal cords. Now the third surgery is relaxing thyroplasty or otherwise known as type 3 thyroplasty. Again there is only one indication, buberphonia, but I request you to stress more of here. Don't press wound into voice therapy. It is very easy to jump into the surgery because this is an easy surgery and it is probably the most traumatic surgery in ENT. Because patients, when he speaks like that, all of a sudden you want to tell when he starts speaking, really low is something, it is highly tempting to do the surgery. But 90% of the patients do very well with voice therapy. So only if they are not responding to voice therapy, you go for a paper for a surgical management. Otherwise, it is unfair because I remember that, you know, I had demonstrated this surgery two to one months. And uh, oh. two, two, two three years later, I had a conference with my own. Then I was shocked to see an 18 year old boy, 19 year old boy, who had already a conference and I did that. That was so bad because none of them were good there. So the principle is simple, you make two cuts on either side of the bend line, by the limit of the bend line, again only up to the internal very complex, make this segment totally free, push it in, and how much low pitch you want, at that particular point you loosely fix it with volume. You can see, before the surgery the vocal cord is very tense, after the surgery the vocal cord is lax. Don't make it too lax, the voice will be bad. So, and it generally, I would ask something like stepdectomy, which is a very, very One, dramatic surgery, two, both the table patients who is in form suddenly five, very, very strong. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two,
Can she direct 